In some areas of life, bigger is better. But when it comes to microchips, smallness is boss. In May, a team of engineers at Columbia announced a new implantable medical microchip, so tiny it can be injected into a human body with a syringe. It's about the size of a single grain of salt. Chips like this one could eventually be used to monitor, diagnose, or treat medical problems. But there's a twist. The Columbia team's work also collided with the world of online conspiracy theories, much to their dismay. Before we tackle the misinfo though, here's the real truth about injectable microchips. Increasingly, there's a there's growing interest in what can be done with actual implantable devices beyond what can be just done with drugs. So we're looking at um, implantables that we call chip as system devices. So these are devices in which the implantable is nothing but the chip. Um, there's nothing else. This device is the smallest device that I'm aware of that allows bi-directional communication. Many equivalent ways you could calculate it. Ken Shepard, a professor of electrical and biomedical engineering at Columbia, oversaw the team that developed the new chip. You've probably heard of surgically implantable medical devices, like pacemakers. The goal of projects like this microchip is to make medical devices that can be inserted and removed with less invasive measures. You can see the chip here being tested inside, yes, that's a raw chicken breast. So what exactly could an implantable device that minuscule actually do? The Columbia team hopes one day chips like these could detect the spread of cancers or monitor one tiny area of the body, measuring the presence of a particular enzyme or biomarker. In this particular paper, we were just measuring temperature, which is a relatively easy thing to measure in a solid state device. But you can imagine all, measuring all kinds of things. So for example, we're working on measuring pH, acidity or alkalinity of, of tissue, which is important in, in many functions. We're specifically looking at monitoring various biomarkers during wound healing uh, to under understand the wound healing process and perhaps even try to actuate in ways that would allow us to allow wounds to heal faster. But getting here wasn't easy. Besides being extremely tiny, the engineers needed to power the chip wirelessly. It also needed to send and receive data. One of the challenges with doing that is how you communicate with the device. So normally we think of wireless interconnection, we think of using RF, right? That's the way our cell phone works. It's pervasive, electromagnetics are pervasive in the way we, we uh, interact wirelessly with devices today. The wavelength typically for the kinds of frequencies that our cell phones use are on the order of centimeters in size. Devices we're trying to make are, are just fractions of a millimeter, um, 300 microns or about three tenths of a millimeter. So it becomes impractical to communicate with them using electromagnetics. The answer to the communication challenge turned out to be ultrasound. Yes, the same technology used to take candid shots of your future bundle of joy. Ultrasound's much shorter wavelengths made communication with a tiny device possible. Ultrasound is also how the chip is powered. An imager sends a request for information into the body. An element in the microchip essentially turns some of that ultrasound into energy, which powers the chip. That power allows the chip to act and send data back to the imager. So as we know, uh, ultrasound has been widely used in medical imaging, so it's uh, regarded as quite safe. That's Chen Shi, lead author on the Columbia team's paper, who headed the chip's development and continues to test its capabilities. To survive the harsh environment inside the body, uh, we will need to coat our chip with some stable and biocompatible film. So we have actually demonstrated the chip being survived in water for over 21 days. Um, but actually, to, for real-world use, um, we would need to develop more robust coating. Now, some much simpler implantable microchips are already used in pets, usually to identify them in case an animal gets lost. These are also much larger. Outside raw chicken, other animals have also been the testing medium for this new injectable microchip. At this stage, we have tried injection uh, in um, a mouse, so it's still in the early research stage. Human use is a long way down the road, but by that time, I'm sure this um, we will we'll make sure that this technology, technology is very safe and mature. The Columbia team's technology hasn't yet been tested on a single person. Yet you'd never know it, based on some of the people most excited by the chip's announcement. And yet, here's where things get weird. The engineers ran into a communications problem, which they couldn't solve with ultrasound. 
Their work was seized on by people spreading baseless viral online rumors and misinformation about COVID-19 vaccines. These conspiracies falsely claim that vaccines contain injectable microchips meant to track us or somehow control our minds. A headline about injectable microchips, even a completely unrelated one, can set believers into a tizzy. I also found about this recently and was really uh, surprised and shocked um, because I really have to explain here that uh, this work was conducted way before the COVID um, and for many years. And we are really trying to benefit society and human beings by our scientific research. Um, and uh, to be honest, this chip uh, it has nothing to do with COVID, nothing to do with vaccines. What it does is just to monitor the physiological condition of a patient so that we can assist the surgery or, or provide uh, the, the critical or vital signals uh, uh, you know, a patient might need to tell the state of health. It, that's it. Vaccine-related conspiracy theories can be found all over social media, sometimes even given a boost by celebrity believers and divisive politicians. Releasing a virus through this microchip that will essentially kill you virtually instantly. An interface between what's being injected in these shots and all of the 5G towers. It's not just receiving an implant that is the mark of the beast. The stuff I've heard is it's, uh, that somehow it's going to interface with 5G. Anyone that knows basic electromagnetics knows that the wavelengths that we're talking about here are substantially larger than these devices, and there would be no way that that could possibly happen. The devices that we're talking about here don't communicate with electromagnetics. They communicate with ultrasound. Unless you're going to walk around with an ultrasound imager uh, attached to your body, I don't think you have any risk of these devices communicating any information anywhere. So this is nonsense. But no matter how much sense they make, online rumors and medical misinformation can have serious consequences. According to one recent survey, as many as one in five Americans believes there's a microchip hidden in the new vaccines, which makes the conspiracy a significant contributor to vaccine hesitancy, even as unvaccinated people continue to face alarming rates of COVID-19-related hospitalization and death. Well, you might think, okay, a conspiracy theory, it's just words, right? Uh, you know, sticks and stones, right? Uh, but at the same time, these words translate into actions. People are willing or not willing to take a vaccine because of some rumor they've heard. They're willing to trust or not trust public health authorities because of these rumors. We do have a great vaccine, but it doesn't really work if people are too scared by rumors to actually get the vaccine. And so uh, we can see how it's making the responding to the pandemic much harder. Tara Kirksell is a senior scholar and assistant professor at John Hopkins University. She focuses on public health policy, like pandemic preparedness and response, specializing in issues related to conspiracy theories and misinformation. She also knows firsthand what it's like to have your research abused by opportunists. We had done a coronavirus exercise um, before um, this pandemic started because we, were, we thought it was important to raise awareness for these types of events. It was hijacked by some conspiracy theorists. The 2019 exercise attempted to simulate the potential response to a serious pandemic, including figures from the world of science, medicine, media, and business. The idea was to improve coordination between these entities in an emergency situation, which is basically exactly the kind of thing that you might expect from public health researchers. And yet when a catastrophic real world health crisis hit soon after, the drill was falsely retrofitted into some sort of deep state dry run for the coming plague by conspiracy peddlers like Alex Jones. Literal devil worshippers, it's incredible, it's good. People like Tara, Ken and Chen who get caught in this kind of crossfire might wanna to rush to defend their work. But experts say, if you're not careful, you might just end up spreading the lie. You don't want to amplify it, um, but you want to be able to answer the question that someone may have. So a lot of times it can be, you know, putting out a true statement that refutes the false information without sort of highlighting that false information. But I'll be honest, it is very difficult. And I think the trick here is to limit engagement until it's absolutely necessary, right? I don't want to highlight um, and promote a conspiracy theory about my work. Um, and so I'm careful to engage it only when it becomes a, a big issue. The engineers behind the tiny implantable microchip say they generally ignore the distortions, but it's hard as media outlets make jokes and publish fact checks, distinguishing their real work from the conspiracy version. We need to do a better job of communicating, communicating science and engineering to the general population, not only what it can and can't do, but what benefits it brings to everyone. Certainly people have seen this 
today with the coronavirus vaccines, right? The mRNA vaccines have worked spectacularly well. Though the conspiracies may be frustrating, the team behind the injectable microchip say they won't let them get in the way of their progress. They plan to continue pushing the limits of how small an implantable medical device can be. And they're working towards eventual human trials, believing this technology can one day make people's lives better. I mean, we can't delay publishing our stuff because we're worried that some crazy somewhere is gonna think that this is part of a conspiracy. So all we can do is lay out the facts. And uh, I don't think that you can let any of these things change how you do science or how you do engineering. You just can't.